On this vote, the yeas are 216, the nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. <laughs> oh, Christmas has come early, baby. Real early. <laughs> what a wonderful day. Oh, happy day. You know, and uh, listen, guys, I've got a lot of clips to show you today. So sit back, relax, grab a snack and a drink of your choice because we got a lot to talk about today uh, in this video. And, um, you know, obviously we're talking about Kevin McCarthy being ousted as Speaker of the House. And let me tell y'all, Shout out to Matt Gates. Big shout out to Matt Gates because in my humble opinion, and if you disagree, let me know in the comment section. I'm sure some of you may. Let me know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Y'all know I'm always open to uh, the possibility of me being wrong about a specific topic, but you have to make an argument. Don't just be like the Democrats on the left and just yell and scream and call me a effing idiot. You know, that ain't going to work in convincing me that I'm wrong. If I am wrong, I don't believe that I am, but you know, hey, maybe you'll put up a good argument. Let me know in the comment section. But in my humble opinion, Matt Gates has really exposed a lot of folks and we're going to be talking about some of those folks. Let's dive in. On January 3rd, we said the 118th Congress is about three things. Pass the bills that need passed, do the oversight work that needs to be done, and stop the inevitable omnibus that comes from the United States Senate right before the holidays. Kevin McCarthy has been rock solid on all three. We have passed the bills we told the American people we would pass. 87,000 IRS agents, that bill, that bill passed. Parents' Bill of Rights, that bill passed. Energy legislation passed. Border security, immigration enforcement legislation, the strongest bill ever to pass the Congress, passed earlier this year. We have done what we told them we were going to do. We can't help but the Senate won't take up those good common sense bills. They'll have to answer to the American people come Election Day. Oversight. We have done the oversight that we're supposed to do. Because of our oversight, we know that parents were targeted by the Department of Justice. Because of our oversight, we know that 51 former intel officials misled the country weeks before the most important election we have. And because of our oversight, the Disinformation Governance Board at the Department of Homeland Security is gone. Because of our oversight, the memo attacking pro-life Catholics has been rescinded. Because of our oversight, unannounced visits to Americans' home by the Internal Revenue Service has stopped. That happened under Speaker McCarthy. And on because the third one, on this side, of the, we know there's a big old ugly bill coming at the end of the year. All kinds of spending, all kinds of garbage in it. We're still in that fight. Frankly, to Matt's point, we don't know how that one's going to shake out. But we do know this. We do know this. On Saturday, we didn't take the Senate's bill. They tried to send over and shove it down our throats on Saturday. We didn't take that bill. And it was a tough position he was in. There were five options on the table last week. Option one was to send a long-term CR over there. That would have leveraged the 1% cut, something a bunch of us voted for. Both parties couldn't get the votes for that one. Second option was to focus on the one issue the country now is completely focused on, the border issue. We couldn't get the votes for that one either. But when the Senate tried to send us that bill, he said no to it. I think the Speaker has kept his word. I know my colleagues and friends are saying different. I think he has kept his word on those three things that we talked about on January 3rd, frankly, that entire week. He has kept his word. I think we should keep him as Speaker. I yield back. Now, in fairness, you know, I wanted to show you guys Jim Jordan, you know, who I've actually supported in the past, right? I mean, listen, make no... See, it's, it's on video, so of course I can't make any secrets about it, and I'm not going to go and try to secretly delete the videos. Oh, yeah, I was, supporting, I was supporting Jim Jordan. Heck, I was supporting Kevin McCarthy at one point. I was like, oh, yeah, Kevin McCarthy is actually doing what we wanted him to do. And then I had to make a video and, you know, confess to me being wrong about Kevin McCarthy. I'll admit to my wrongs. No problem with that. I'll admit when I'm wrong. But the problem is a lot of these folks can never do that. 
is recognized. Yeah, the, the problem with my friend from Ohio's uh, argument is that many of the bills he referenced as having passed are not law. We are on a fast track to an omnibus bill, and it is difficult to champion oversight when House Republicans haven't even sent a subpoena to Hunter Biden. So it's hard to make the argument that oversight is the reason to continue when it sort of looks like failure theater. My colleague says we've passed the strongest border bills in history. Well, guess what? Look at the border right now. We didn't Thanks. use sufficient leverage in the debt limit or in any other thing to actually get results on the border. The border is a disaster, really something I don't think you're going to be campaigning on that you fix the border. Second, Thanks. you said you streamlined regulations. What the gentleman from Louisiana doesn't tell you is that all of the regulatory reform he was just bragging about is waivable by the stroke of a pen of someone in the Biden White House. Do you really think you've got anything for that? It's a total joke. And then finally, the welfare to work that the gentleman from Louisiana said we got. The welfare programs that they said that they streamlined with their welfare to work stuff, they're actually going to grow. Because while they did work requirements, they blew out those programs with expanded eligibility. I'm real glad you guys didn't put work requirements on Medicaid. It probably would have resulted in Medicaid expansion. And when it comes to how those raise money, I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have, oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. I'll be happy to fund my political operation through the work of hardworking Americans, 10 and 20 and $30 at a time, and you all keep showing up at the lobbyist fundraiser and see how that goes for you i reserve notice how they all booed when he called them out for being what's a what's a what's a nice way to say this um uh behind kissers okay behind kissers for the almighty dollar he said no I, I'm, I'm not gonna go kiss booty for a couple of dollars i will ask the hard-working americans to to fund this movement and i'm fine with that 100 percent. because in my humble opinion matt gates is one of the only people uh, that I personally feel is actually doing what we want them to do, you know? Um, and you guys remember when I said that the Republican Party, I don't even remember which video it was, but I said a while back, the Republican Party after 2024 is going to look different. And I think the Republican Party is going to look a whole lot more like Matt Gates than it will Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell. I think the days of the Kevin McCarthy's and the Mitch McConnell's are over now there's going to be some republicans that are going to yell kick and scream as they already are which we're going to dive into you're going to be shocked you're going to be absolutely shocked to see which republicans are are, are yelling and screaming oh my good i was shocked i was taken back i trusted this guy i'm just going to show you the clip check this out some of our brothers and sisters particularly in the uh you know, uh, MAGA camp, I think, uh, particularly enjoy the circular firing squad. You want to come at me and call me a rhino? You can kiss my ass. Look, oh. I've spent a lifetime fighting for limited government conservatism. I have laid it all on the line. I have not seen my family but for two days in the last 30 days. You go around talking your big game and you thumping your chest on Twitter. Yeah, come to my office and come have a debate, mother. You know why? Because I'm standing up for this country every single day. And Steve, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to go to a nunnery because God, there were people who were buried over in Normandy who deserve us to stand up for what they fought for. So that's what I'm going to do. And all these out there who are out there saying what you're saying out on social media, you stick it. I'm going to go down to the floor and do my job and I'm going to stand up for the people who fought for this country. And I'm going to do it the way I think is right for the people that I represent. That's what I think. What happened to a country where we can't even have order? Mm -hmm. You want to know what Ron DeSantis should be talking about as being the governor who can restore order as president of the United States? So, yeah, as you just saw there, Chip Roy, somebody who I considered great at one point. Well, that's uh, slightly gone down the drain a bit here, you know, at least until I get some more explanation. And I hate, uh, gosh, I hate. Like, what, what, what's the point of bringing up people who sacrificed their lives? Like, to try to garner some sympathy? Like, I, 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 I just didn't understand that point there. But then also, he talked about not seeing his kids and his family. Well, this is the job you signed up for. You signed up for this. Nobody asked you. Nobody forced you. I shouldn't say asked. Nobody forced you to take on this job. 
So you, the, the whole sob story, I haven't seen my family. So I don't care. I don't care. You signed up for this. This is what you signed up for. It'd be different if this wasn't something you signed up for and somebody else, you know, forced you into this position and then you're like, man, I wanted to spend time with my family. I didn't sign up for this. But that's not the case. You wanted this job. You know what it entails. What are you complaining about? I haven't seen my family in two days. I'm making these sacrifices. So, and... You know how people make sacrifices on a daily basis because of the government that you're responsible for helping to run? How many people sit at the gas pump and decide, hmm, should I put a whole 20 in this tank or should I only put 10 so I can go get some food to eat? That's the sacrifice. Like, ah, this, this angers me so much. This angers me so much. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to curse. I want to yell. I want to scream. Sheesh, Louise. I don't, do y'all do get angry, like, seeing stuff like that? Oh, I haven't seen my family. <sighs> I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to start cursing. And <sighs> But you also have somebody else that, you know. 96% just... of the Republicans voted for McCarthy. 4% voted against him. From my position as a longtime Republican activist, they're traitors. All eight of them should, in fact, be primaried. They should all be driven out of public life. What they did was to go to the other team to cause total chaos. We ought to be focusing on Biden. We ought to be focusing on the economy. We ought to be focusing on the border. Instead, you're going to get a week or 10 days of the media focusing on Republican disarray. It's an astonishingly destructive behavior by a handful of egocentric people who think they're superior to 96% of the conference. Oh, notice what he said there at the end. The conference. I thought y'all were supposed to represent the people, not the conference. You're supposed to represent the people. And last time I checked, the people have spoken and the people had said that they didn't want Kevin McCarthy. The people, right? You know, the, the same people that you, you all run to to get you to those positions those same people have said we don't want kevin mccarthy so you tell us that those eight individuals including matt gates should be primaried and ostracized from society because they did what the people wanted them to do well that tells me a lot new that tells me a whole lot about you it tells me everything i need to know what a, what a ridiculous statement and even if you want to take a look at okay so check the check this out i'm just going to show you guys this post as well so uh, breaking, Newt Gingrich is calling uh, calling the eight Republicans who voted the, to remove McCarthy traitors and calling for them to be removed from office. Do you agree? I absolutely do not agree with Newt. Not at all. Uh, here's one, Newt is correct. Uh, the guy that used to brag about uh, him and Clinton getting it done, being financially responsible, now he's a war hawk and spendthrift. Not at all. Newt is a traitor. Uh, Newt forced to build a Clinton. I'm not about to read all that. Uh, Newt is... <laughs> Newt is on Epstein. Hey, maybe. R.P. Newt. Newt thumbs down. Uh, hilarious. Uh, one of the eight. Uh, decorate, uh, the minute. Newt is wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I've lost all respect for him. They aren't traitors. You know, so for the most part, obviously, you're, you're of course, going to have your outliers, as you saw there. You know, we, we had we had a few people that agreed. But for the most part, what would you guys say? 70%? 70% say, uh, no, you're wrong. So what does that say, Newt? What does that say? So should those eight people be ousted because 70% of the people say that they're right? Or should you guys just force your agenda across anyway? Hmm. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. You know, I, I, huh? and you know, of course, that lends us to the question of who should be the next speaker? Well, ladies and gentlemen, have no fear. I have an option here. Now. Sources telling me at this hour, some House Republicans have been in contact with and have started an effort to draft former President Donald Trump to be the next speaker. And I have been told uh, that uh, President Trump might be open to helping the Republican Party, at least in the short term, if necessary, uh, if it's needed. Now, sources telling Ooh. <laughs> oh, boy. Talk about angering the left. Trump as Speaker of the House? <laughs> oh, man. 
Hey, listen. Word on the streets is that Trump is actually up for it. He's actually down for it. So what do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section who should be the next speaker of the house. Honestly, I I might venture to say I I I like Matt Gates, but then again, I feel like people would vote against him just because, you know. Uh I'm trying to think here. Maybe Byron? If obviously if not Trump, in my humble opinion. What do you guys think though? Let me know in the comment section. And also make sure you head over to my Twitter account because I dropped a poll on there. If I can bring up my uh look, check this out. So as you can see, I released a poll. Only 15 people have voted so far. Do you agree with Matt Gates or Kevin McCarthy? Matt Gates, 93, Kevin McCarthy, 6.7%, which would be like one person. Um one to 14 because you can see as, as of right now there's only 15 people that voted so far um so head over to my twitter account and uh vote hey if you if you agree with kevin mccarthy hey stand say it loud and proud baby say it loud and proud all right loud and proud but these are the eight individuals as well i guess i should show this that uh voted to stand with <clears throat> matt gates and oust kevin mccarthy uh, obviously, Matt Gates, Nancy Mace, Andy Biggs, Matt Rosendale, uh, Eli Crane, is that how you pronounce that? Ken Buck, Tim Burchett, and Bob Good. Uh, I believe Tim Burchett, uh, wait, I can't remember who it was, but one of them voted against McCarthy because uh, he apparently or allegedly, allegedly made fun of his religion. Uh, and I believe he's a Christian, so mm, that says a lot about Kevin McCarthy. <sighs> That, that's allegedly, of course. That's allegedly. 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 All right. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs. Would, would not mind Andy Biggs. I, I, honestly, not that I'm really thinking about it because Andy Biggs was against Kevin McCarthy from the beginning and he stood on that up until now. Obviously, Matt Gates as well, but I feel like Matt Gates has created a lot of enemies and uh, people will just go against him just to do it, you know, kind of thing, which we all know what to do next election. Because with only eight people standing up for what the people say we want them to do, that says a lot about the Republican Party. It says a whole lot. It says a whole lot. Until we get more explanations. Because even guys like my guy Byron Donalds, where you at? Where you at? You know, Jim Jordan, where you at? Where you at? Well, obviously, we saw the clip of Chip Roy, which I'm highly disappointed about. And, um, you know, I, I, I expressed my, my thoughts and feelings of, uh, on that. I'm not, I'm not going to get back into that because I don't want to get angry. Of course, you know, because that's just absolutely ridiculous. Let me know. Do you guys agree with me? Am I wrong? Talk to me, please. Peace and love, family. I'm out.